<laughs> All right, let's call this regular monthly meeting to order for the Scarborough Sanitary District on April 28, 2022. Roll call. We'll start on the left side of the table. Ben McDougal. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Ruth Summer. Here. Mike Snarney. Here. Joe Carroll. Here. Paul Rudman. Here. I am Nick Rico, Chairman. I'm also here. <coughs> so, approval of the minutes from the regular monthly meeting in March. Ooh, approval. Second. All right. Any corrections, additions, subtractions? All right, none all in favor? None opposed. I'm One abstain. All right, um, superintendent's report. Okay, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of March would include the packet. Our average ethanol flow for the month was 1.51 million gallons a day. <coughs> our ethanol quality was well within our perimeter's limits. We averaged 94% uh, BOD removal and 99% TSS removal concentrations for 13 and 3 respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of March is also included in the packet. No issues for, for concern were noted. Uh, LD, I spoke at a press uh, release in support of the minority amendment, which required all sludges to be tested and meet very stringent limits for PFAS prior to land applications. The bill was submitted and passed by the legislation car carved out exceptions for certain sludges and compost regardless of PFAS concentrations, while not allowing municipal sludges to be magnified regardless of PFAS concentrations. Um, <coughs> this, this bill did pass as uh, the majority amendment uh, went through and um, uh, the governor has recently signed it, so it will be going into effect in 90 days. Uh, this will uh, effectively probably double our sludge disposal costs in the next calendar year. Um, <clears throat> Headworks odor control, Carl and Paul have started with the installation of a new Vapex unit which will be used to treat the odors in the Headworks and Brick Tank. They hopefully will be starting that up next month. Uh, we met with Oil Tanner Associates to discuss the next step regarding asset management. We're going to start looking at several different programs to determine what will best fit our needs. We've got a um, demonstration that will be taking place this coming Tuesday. Um, a couple things I wanted to add. Main DOT has received bids for repaving Black Point Road from Highland Ave uh, to Route 77. Uh, with that, the district needs to adjust slash repair 34 manholes. Uh, we budgeted $114,000 for this work. We knew, knew it was coming. Uh, we had have uh, pre-ordered the frames and covers, and that came in at a cost of $34,000. And the bids received for the installation came in at $66,500 for a total project cost of $100,500. So we move forward with that. Uh, Fournier has offered a free pilot test for, our, for their dewatering equipment. This will take place uh, probably the week of the 6th or the following, depending on how uh, staffing works out. With that, and considering recent global price increases, I've actually have asked Underwood to update their cost analysis for uh, sludge dewatering op options. Underwood has estimated that this cost uh, will cost about $2,000, which I feel feel that it will be uh, well worth the expense and um, we have, we have uh, budgeted monies to cover that. Uh, Ted Berry, um, also known as Vortex since he's a bot, uh, they just told us that they uh, have uh, increased their daily rate for their back truck which we use uh, quite frequently uh, from $2,600 to $3,500 a day. That's it for the superintendent's report. Any questions for the superintendent? I had one. Yep. Uh, we currently use Fournier to press sludge and deep water. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we need a double gravity belt thickener for those. Do we really entertain getting new ones? New Fournier. Replace the old ones. 
It's going to be an analysis that we do. We, we, we were never, weren't, in any of the options, we weren't getting rid of the gravity belt thickness. The gravity belt thickness um, uh, helped us with regards to storage of volume of the waste activated okay. sludge. Yeah. So we thicken, we waste from the secondary clarifiers to the gravity belt thickener, which then goes to the sludge holding tanks. So the sludge holding tanks are, wouldn't so, accommodate yeah. uh, uh, the amount of wasting that we do without thickening. Okay. I didn't realize that. I thought we were looking at technology that could potentially take the place of both dewatering equipment and thickening equipment. No, we, we are looking at the one of the uh, things that we are testing out is the um, ability of the equipment to be able to dewater um, just either pure waste activated sludge or thickened waste activated mm -hmm. sludge without primaries, primary sludge. And that's usually the Achilles heel of any type of screening device, whether it's a screw press or a four-year press or Mm -hmm. Good job. Any other questions for the superintendent? We got a little nerdy on that one. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, now let's move on to correspondence. Uh, an ability to serve letter was provided for the proposed building to replace an existing building, which we did not. The current food flow is 226 gallons per day of the local sanitary waste uh, based on district needs, and that is at 370 US Route 1. Phase 9 of the Downs and Ability Serve letter was provided for the proposed phase 9 of the Downs. The anticipated flow is 13,822 gallons. Our Cross Chemicals uh, had sent us a, a letter which I included about an increase in price due to the cost of fuel. Bullet and Associates sent our chairman their annual letter regarding the risk of fraud. And attached uh, is the letter with uh, Mr. Rico's response. No concerns were noted by Mr. Rico. And um, along that line, they are uh, finalizing their annual audit and more than likely will be presenting it at the next board. Uh, Diane McCain email concerning PFAS. I re received the attached email from Ms. McCain. She was concerned about my position with regard to PFAS and wanted me to reconsider my position. I reached back to her and attached in the attached email explaining that my concern is that the current majority amendment continues to allow some sludges to be land applied regardless of PFAS <coughs> concentrations with no testing requirements. I feel that all sludges should be tested and if found safe, continued use should be allowed, but, if, but all contaminated sludges need to be identified and landfill the better protecting uh, I, I offered up to her to speak to her uh, following Monday, but I, she did not reach out to her. Uh, we did receive our sludge P PFAS sampling results. I attached a copy of those results as shown in the report. Our sludge had a concentration uh, for PFOS, PFOS of 47 parts per billion, and PFOA, PFOA of 1.4 parts per billion. Um, let's see, DEP uh, has requested a copy of any request records and the physical location for 14 sites the district had spread sludge on prior to 1984. Uh, we, do, we do not have those records um, physically, but uh, fortunately, we have Ken. Um, <laughs> oh, four. Who's been with the district, I think, 42, 44, 45 years, something like that. And he knows each and one of these sites. So uh, they're actually, um, she's actually coming out tomorrow and meeting with Ken and I, and we're going to go over all the various site locations. And I suspect that they will be. Uh, following up with samples and, uh, and very curious to find out what those people are talking And finally, I have a project withdrawal from phase five of Townsend North for the town. We have a crossroad holding LLC for Palmer's withdrawing that application for approval for phase five of the Downs. This is in preparation of a, another phase that kind of 
is the same phase, but part of it, and it just gets very confusing in that we just begin it. So that's that's where we are. <coughs> and that's all I have for correspondence. Any questions about the correspondence for the superintendent? Go ahead, Ben. What do those PFAS numbers mean compared to what the DEP is regulating? <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> I okay. don't know. Um, they um, there are a lot of numbers that are thrown out there, and they, and they all have different meanings. In the drinking water, for drinking water, there is a PFAS concentration of parts per trillion. I don't, is my understanding. Um, that 47 is lower than any other standard for allowable beneficial reuse throughout the country other than the state of Maine now that that, that law has passed. So anywhere else that, that sludge <coughs> could be used for beneficial reuse. I do know that. Okay. Um, but the, the, the open-ended question is what is a safe concentration? Mm. And that's what EPA is for. Any more questions about the project plan? We'll move on to old business, and we have none, so new yeah. business. Hey, Mr. Howard Gray. Mr. Gray is a neighbor of the treatment plant <coughs> from whom the district purchased land from in 1996. Um, and I didn't confirm that date, that date came from Mr. Gray. I assume that's correct. I can uh, just barely hear you, Dave. So. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Howard. Um, so Mr. Gray would like to purchase some of the, some of his land back. I have uh, highlighted the attached GIS map uh, of the area of interest, and it comprises approximately 3.9 acres and is situated in the northwesterly portion of the district's property, which abuts the golf course. He is in front of us, in front of you today, to kind of open the discussion and see where we want to proceed with, with this and. Uh, options and so with that Mr. Gray did you want to say something? Uh, you probably got this stuff. A few years back I have been aware that the Scarborough, Scarborough Sanitation District might think about returning some of the property back to us. That, uh, they acquired back in 1996. I am now in a position to make an offer for some of that land. My family and I would like to get the homestead back into the family, maybe even small pieces at a time. The family would like to conserve the land by planting trees and shrubs to make it a better habitat for the animals in the area. We would promise not to build on it, and to keep it whole in perpetuity, except for about half an acre abutting our field. I would like a piece of about four acres abutting our back field, a piece bounded in falls from my back field next to the golf course, along the golf course, to the marsh, and along the marsh to about 135 feet from your old property line and then it's about a thousand feet back to a junction of our property line with the Harmons and the sanitation district line. And again, uh, I'm not sure, this is to see if the board would even think about selling it, is uh, my position right now, of turning it back to the uh, original owners. Well, it's great. Um, one of the challenges we, oh, one of the challenges we have is if we sell land now, we can't sell it again. There was a reason we bought the land. I wasn't on the district board then, but I imagine we bought it for future expansion and for buffering. Uh, I'm unaware of anyone who indicated they might sell back the land. Are you aware of anyone that made that promise to you? 
Nobody made a promise to me, but uh, it was understood by me that if I brought it to the board, if they would think about it. That's the only thing that was ever uh, mentioned. Okay. So, I'll entertain other board member opinions. What do you guys think? <clears throat> do we have any records of anything as to why this land was purchased? I expect it's for expansion like we talked about. The, uh, was there a preliminary plan done for expansion? Or? It was done, it's easiest if I show you on here. Yeah, that's what I was just um, See, the you know, outline in red, which is what he wants to purchase back. I should have outlined the original property, which goes behind, what's your neighbor's name? Uh, it was Jimmy Harmon's. Jim, Jimmy Harmon's. It projected straight back from his property, is my recollection. And if you follow that line back, you can see it goes right through the garage that we now own. Um, or that we have on yeah. the site. So that was the original reasoning for the additional land uh, so that they could expand and build that garage as part of the upgrade. And uh, it, it looks like we're using some of that land where you can see some disturbed ground and that polygon. Yeah, there's, oh, the, uh, the, the, the white piece? Yeah. Yes. That actually is uh, sand. There was a sand pit when they dredged the, the, the river back 30 years ago now. Uh, yeah, was that for, for longer ago? Long, that. long time yeah. ago. So that that is just that is the purest white sand that you'll find in the anywhere. It's, it's beautiful sand, um, but it came out of the river when they dredged it, and they've actually been using that uh, when they do some uh, dune refurbishment down in uh, Crouch Neck area. They'll use that sand. They'll come back and use that sand. That's all that, all that is. Yeah. It's actually almost paid out. It's not much of it. it. used to be a mountain. Now it's a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems like the primary purpose of that piece of land would be buffering. And, uh, which, which can be an important thing for a sanitary district to have some buffering from the butters. We, we would have no we would have no buffer remaining on that side of the property. It doesn't you know it looks like it would be grass right up to the property line if we if we sold that. Uh, I do not intend to build on it. I'd use it more for a, more or less like a game preserve than anything else. And I also uh, stipulated in the deed it would be right into maturity. I'd never never build on it. But you want to have one house on there. Don't want to have any houses on there. Okay, you said it, except for a, ha uh, a half acre. What, what's yes, that a half yeah. acre for? But down in here, we own about three and three quarters acres here, and right here is where I'd like to just add it so that gives me a four acre piece rather than a three and three quarter acre piece. So you want to clear back a half acre and, and have it as field? No, we, and I want to just leave it the way it is now, but on the town records it would show that there's a four acre piece of land in my whole property right along. Okay. So you, would you keep two separate lots? I may have to. Yeah. And, and you want to take some, yes. if, you, if you purchase the back lot, you would take yeah. some of that back lot and combine it with the front lot? About 100 feet, yeah. For, for what purpose? To increase my uh, lot size from three and three quarter acres to about four and a quarter acres. Okay, and does that allow you to do some development with that lot by getting to that four acre? Possibly. Okay. What does that do to our setback? Like if he now owns that and you don't. Is your garage too close to his property no. line? Well, I have no intent on building up any of that stuff. And that's the thing, we don't need it. Uh, oh, me. We don't intend on building on that land either. It is a buffering piece. Right. 
Now, if we ever had to expand the district, I suppose we would have to go in that direction. If we ever had to. Right. And I don't see the need, but I do see the importance of the buffer. I mean, I, I, I guess I personally, just knowing that we're not going to build on it or intend on it, I'd be inclined to entertain at least making his acreage whole, you know, to his four acres. Um, but I think the other part of it is if we sell you that land, you're going to have to pay taxes on it, too. You're going to what? You'd have to pay taxes on it, but we're not, we're not. We're not going to. So I'm, I'm not sure. sure if that's beneficial to you I, in that aspect, but I, I'm, I'd, I'd be interested in entertaining to make his, his purpose whole for his four acres. I don't think that, uh, that uh, impacts our buffering or potential in the expansion. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, that would put a lot between us and the golf course. So I think he's pointing at this. So this lot here would make it the four acres, yes. Number two in the pencil sketch with the yellow, is that what we're looking at? This one? Is this number two, what will give you the uh, four acres that we, what are you looking primarily at for, for this? Well, my original intent was to have about 100 feet right across here. 100 feet across the front. But then I figured if I'm going to make an offer, why not buy, we get, give that back to what you people acquired from us on the original. This is the original, yep. what the uh, sanitation district acquired. And now what I want to do is try to get it back so we got access to the marsh and the, go out there and put a blind and stuff out to it. Yeah, We've got a deer, deer stand out there now. Sure. Yeah. You, know. you know, one of the things that we could entertain is an easement to you from us, allowing you to legally go and use that deer stand and get to the marsh. All you want. I mean, from I'm not a hunter, but I understand for permission reasons you need to ask every year. Yes, no, right. yes. Yeah. So <laughs> if you had an easement from us, you wouldn't have to ask that permission every year. So you know, I I like Joe's idea of selling you back some of the land to make you whole like a full, full acre. I didn't understand what he was pointing at though, Joe. He's talking about basically like a hundred foot into this yellow. Okay. To, to make out the whole total, yellow line. Yes, no. So he's talking about, about just this. this very front part okay. and to make him yeah. four yeah. acres entirely. Because I mean, he's at 3.88, right? Pardon me? You're at 3.88, correct? Uh, something close to that, yeah. Like that. And you want a full four acre. Yeah. I, I so, I mean, what are you talking about? I, that right that. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. So, he doesn't want all the way? No, well, he wants this. Well, he yes, 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 he does. Oh, he yes. wants it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. his main thing is this. Exactly. You want right. what's in yellow. Yes. Um, yeah. um, okay. He wants it all. But what we're talking about is maybe we sell him the lot to make him whole for four acres. Yeah. Like this lot. Whole. Yeah. Whole right. And then give him an easement all the way to the marsh for the rest of it. You know, we would okay. plant shrubs and trees or whatever that we need to do to keep the buffer between us and the golf course anyway. You know, we gave away all the sand. The easement would let me go in there and plant trees and do stuff like that, is what you're saying. If you wanted to, I wouldn't stop you, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And hunt. And hunt. It, would, it would restrict you from building it. Yeah, you couldn't build anything on it. They're just restricting yeah, it from building, and then you wouldn't have to pay taxes either. Right. That's even better. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Get them right So, I, I mean, I guess from, from that standpoint, what we need to do is get surveyed and then come up with a uh, plan to, if we want to look at that, right? The, the, the land to make it at least that the four acres. The four acres. So. Would that be all right? I mean, that would be fine, sure. Okay. Yeah. And who does the survey? Do we do it, or do we usually have to do usually it? the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually the yeah. buyer does yeah. it, and we look at it, and we have to put it through our legal, and, and then then give permission based on the sale, and then the sale develop cover. A, develop a um, work with our attorneys to develop an easement. Easement, yes. Um, based on kind of that drawing, and. Uh, 
Yeah, there's probably five to ten thousand dollars worth of legwork that needs to be done, and so I don't know how we want to. Well, I would eat that. I would pay for that. So I, you know, we may need to come to some sort of understanding in order to start spending money. We we would have to commit to making him all up four acres at least, so he doesn't. Right, right. So, do you want me to draft for the next meeting for action on the board a uh, memo, a letter of understanding between Howard Gray and the district uh, that would uh, the end result would be four acres to make his property up to four acres of a sale and then give him an easement as depicted on on uh, this this drawing here, yeah, kind of drawing. color drawing, just you know for the. Well, I would say the first step, yeah, it's just uh, for the next week to do a uh, MOU, a memorandum of understanding that we're, we're, we're committed to making a poll stop mm -hmm. at that point so we can go ahead and, and get that survey that we can would, would work it, these with. What if Mr. Gray gets the survey on his own? And because it would be doing a memorandum of understanding when we don't know if we understand the situation because until we have a survey we don't necessarily know mm -hmm. if we understand it or not mm -hmm. uh so it, it might make more sense if he can you go you know hearing what you've heard that we're we're with you in spirit based on what we're being told you know would you be willing to hire a surveyor to Get all this land surveyed and then come back to us with everything being known. Not all the land, just the land that I'm interested, interested in buying. Yes. 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 Years ago, I had the whole thing the whole surveyed. Thing. Yeah. Okay. The whole piece, but we're only talking about that. I'm thinking about a hundred feet. You know that on. Okay. I think that would be appropriate. I think we need the the piece that the easement would be on right. surveyed also in the yeah, I Right. Sure I think know. I think we need the yellow. Surveyed. If it had been surveyed before, yeah, it should be on ground right somewhere. Right. It shouldn't be a I don't see why you had to pay for it again. Most of that. Yep. Is Dave? Me? <laughs> <laughs> they surveyed it uh, somewhere because uh, I've seen new, new right. survey states along the golf course. I, I, I'm thinking that when we bought it, we it was registered in the Registry of Deeds in Cumberland sure. County. Right. And I bet you the survey is there. And I don't think you have to survey the entire lot again. That's money unnecessarily spent by anyone. No, we just need to see what the survey is for that. For that long. extra 100 foot of for piece. That, yes, yeah. that 0.12 acres. Mm. But his sur surveyor would most likely have to reference what's in would have to reference the old survey yeah. from what yeah. so he'll, he'll pull yeah. that off. Yeah. 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 yeah, so be part of it. Mr. Gray could hire a surveyor to produce this document, uh, and and obviously go to the same surveyor. If, if there's a survey existing, you go to the same surveyor, and they already have the work done. Create us a new document showing the new proposed property line and the new proposed easement, and and then we have something concrete to look at. Does that, does that make sense? Well, surveying it and showing the easement, uh, the easement is over the whole works, as I understand it, so it wouldn't... Uh, and you, you could also, so you, you could come to us with a survey. Yes. Showing the, the amount that you'd be purchasing from us. Right. And you could also have an attorney uh, draft the easement language that, that you'd like and then bring us those documents and and then we would consider the easement language and have our attorney review it and, and i don't know what the most comfortable way to move forward is i feel like there's a little too many unknowns for us to like, sign on to anything at the moment mm -hmm. Wait, i would agree you know i don't expect a motion from this um i just we move forward with Mr. Gray understanding that we're definitely amenable to doing this and as long as he finds the surveyor to do that survey work, whether it is surveying the entire property for an easement or just surveying the 
piece that he wants to buy referencing the original survey. And the easement could be written based on that original survey and the meets and bounds. I think that would be appropriate. Would our attorney draft the easement and he reimburse us for those costs? Or we could do it that way too. Is that kosher? That's kosher. I mean, I don't see the problem with that. I mean, I think it's wise that we draft the easement where it's our land and we. Yes. And we're going to have probably different ideas of stipulation. Could be. Could be. Okay. Not where I can contact our, our attorney and start working on that. And you can, you can uh, work on getting the survey done. Yes. And we'll reconvene. Yes. Should I work on uh, my proposal for easement also? And I'd leave it with Dave to go over. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, you it doesn't, can. But it doesn't hurt to receive an easement proposal yeah. from Mr. Gray. I, you know, at this point, I don't. I'm not sure why we'd start spending money on this at this point with our attorney or our surveyor. I think, I think we could get some proposed. We could get something concrete proposed from Mr. Gray. We can have our attorney look at it. We can rewrite the whole thing, but at least we have we understand what he's looking for uh, before we start. We understand exactly what he's looking for before we start spending district money. I agree with that. That sounds fine. All right. That's cool. Thank you, Mr. Gray. You don't have to vote on it. No, we vote <laughs> when you propose when you bring the easement back to us. When you work it out with Dave and he sent it to our attorney for review, then he'll put it on the agenda for maybe next month. Depends on how quickly you get the survey in there. So, and then we'll vote once we have documents in front of us okay, that fine. show exactly what we're voting on. Okay. That's great. Thank you all. Thank you. To Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you. Before we kill that, did we, uh, I guess we can't until we have, at some point we're going to have to put value on that piece of property. Yes. I don't know how we go about do that more than that because we can vote to go forward, but we may have to. I don't know if we do that ahead of time or not. I guess that's well, a good we question. We're, I mean, we haven't discussed the, the price of the property. We're, do you have an offer for that? Did you have an offer in mind? Or are you going to negotiate? Well, we're talking different things now. Right. We're talking about the 100 foot. We are talking about the whole, whole thing. We're right. going to see how much that yeah. 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 Yeah, we're gonna have to do some whatever kind of the value is appraisal on it. Yeah, well, once we once once we proposed. have a survey done, then we can kind of figure out what that looks like. I think, right? Yep. Because we need to know what the impact is. Yeah, I just wanted him to be aware that there may be another step in the process, so there may be uh, yeah. an approval for the, the the survey and the easement, and then another approval potentially for the cost of the cost of the land. I just want to make sure he was clear on timeline. Okay, that's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Have a great night. Thank you. Hey, Josh. Can you grab the easel for a little bit, please? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's nobody in the hall that you open that door up again. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we, <laughs> we got plenty of air in here. Well, all, yeah. It's all hot. It's all, it's all carbon dioxide now. All the oil with the house care. Thank you, Josh. All right. Now, where are we here? V, we're on V, five short drive. <coughs> Ninja Link. So, um, on behalf of Dunstan Properties, LLC, the Spago Technics requested district approval for a two story retail office building. Uh, 3,872 square feet of office space and 3,872 square feet of retail space as presented in the similar documents. The requested flow for the entire building is 482 gallons per day. The building as designed is intended to have four water meters. With that, there will be four sewer accounts. Wastewater allocation will be based on the final build out and intended uses. Any flows in excess of the approved allocation are accepted, subject to excuse me, additional approvals. I recommend approval with the following conditions. 
Uh, the building wastewater flow allocation limited to 482 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Wastewater allocation for each space will be based on a fine of build out and intended use. Any flows in excess of the allotment or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. The requested 482 gallons per day of wastewater flow is fully subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $18.75 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR uh, construction cost uh, index. Uh, based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $9,037.50. Any flows in excess of the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fee. Recommend approval based on the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. All right. Any questions for superintendent? Who wrote the letter? No one signed it. Oh, that would be that would be Sean Frank. Oh, oh, sorry about that. No worries. Just curious. It was so little on the back, it got missed in the <laughs> It's basically the signature page. So on sheet RS1, uh, the plans, I'm looking at, it's um, part of Sean Frank's plan. Yeah. 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 RS1? RS1. So, you could. Um, I'm looking at the clean out yep. details. Are these clean outs heading in the right direction? It looks like they're going backwards. Don't clean outs usually go towards the downstream? Depends on what's you. It depends on um, clean. We have clean outs that go two different directions for testing purposes. So when we test the the uh, service uh, after it's installed into the building, they actually use the district is always referred to this as a test tee, and they put a ball down here, and they're able to put a ball here and hydro um, hydrostatically test the, the rest of the uh, sewer service. Right. So it would go downstream, right? And that goes upstream. Oh, it goes upstream. And that, in that case, yeah, otherwise they can't get to that cleanup. I that works out backwards. You know, maybe the one in the middle? Yeah. They might want to turn them around to go downstream. The, the one nice thing about having them in that direction, though, is it allows you to jet from the dry side of the plug versus mm -hmm. Doing, yeah. doing the uh, Jacques Cousteau technique and, and going through the flooded, <laughs> flooded oh. sewer, um, yes. sewer line. Okay. And I was just curious about the other detail in the top right. That's just a, a, a generic detail. Okay. Yeah, that looks funky. Around. Yeah. It just looks funky. Unfortunately, when you have a building that was built in 1840 and the septic systems in the back, that's exactly like what happens. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right. So I got my education. Thank you. Mom. Sure. Yeah. Know. Those are actually details from the um, district. That's an all. All right. Now that I asked my cleanup questions, any more questions on the project? All right. None. All in favor? Not opposed. Thank you. By the way, it's interesting and nice to see that all seven plus people together. I appreciate that. It's just good to see you. 240 Innovation Way. If you want to get set up, you can. <laughs> I don't know. I like their approval of Sean's project. <laughs> <laughs> you sign your letter up. <laughs> yeah, that's <that's> the difference. <laughs> I said more. Um, yeah, 240 Innovation Way, IDEX Manufacturing and Research and Development Facility. 
On behalf of IDEX Real Estate Holdings, LLC, Goral Palmer requested district approval for 114,659 square foot manufacturing research development facility, of which 12,254 square feet is expected to be office space. The requested flow of the proposed building is 1,920 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. The development site is located at the end of Innovation Way in the Innovation District of Downs. Lots 16 through 24 and 36 through 45. On the, uh, on the Town Scarborough Assessor's Map, uh, Map 53. Uh, they've all been consolidated into one lot, Lot 25, on the 7th Amendment Subdivision. Uh, 24.6 acre parcel that is currently undeveloped. The lot is abutted to the west by Pride Storage in Shucks Lobster, uh, mainly tubs in lot 35. The areas immediately northeast and south are undeveloped land. Nage Gravity Sewer and Manhole exist within Innovation Way. The existing manhole uh, has a two inch force main stud from East that extends into the site and an eight inch gravity sewer stub from the north that currently exists just outside the innovation and right of way. The existing stub is proposed to be extended into the site by Crossroads, uh, Crossroads LLC as part of the construction of the cul de sac. The application, applicant is proposing an eight inch gravity sewer service out of the southwest corner of the building to a private sewer manhole that would. Uh, then connect to existing sewer manhole 8 in Innovation Way via 8 inch gravity. The connection to the existing sewer manhole require uh, reconstruction of the manhole to accept the 8 inch gravity and placement of the existing 2 inch force main stud as shown on the attachment plates. In addition, the applicant is proposing two barns grinder pumps located to the rear of the building, which will service the five toilets located in the rear portion of the building. The pump will utilize a two-inch force main and discharge from the private sewer terminus manhole, which will tie into the eight-inch gravity stub extension proposed by Crossroads. Cross I recommend approval with the following condition. Uh, the wastewater flow limited to 1,920 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste, and it flows in excess of that allotment characteristics is subject to additional approvals. The proposal is fully subject to the district's capacity reserve fees. IDEX prepaid the capacity <coughs> reserve fee based on the capacity reserve fee of 1859 per gallon, March 2022. The total capacity reserve fee was uh, $35,692.80. Any flows in excess of the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Motion to approve following the conditions. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. All right. Uh, I believe we have uh, Douglas. Yep. And Drew uh, from Coral Farm. Drew has nothing to do with this project. Yep. That's, that's fine. fine. That's fine, Doug. Uh, if you want to give a, a, a quick primer. I mean, there, there's not much more to say. Uh, you, you know, I mean, as Dave said, these. All these lots were the, the, the 21 lots um, that were that originally were the 40,000 square foot lots that were consolidated into one. IDEX is going in here. Um, it's a, it's a, again, an amazing project for the town and, 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 and everybody's opinion. The planning board uh, voted for it unanimously. Um, and Crossroads drew, left us stubs um, for, for a gravity sewer here. And again, we're gonna we're gonna pump. Wait, we just got a small pump station back here. Basically, due to the size of the of the uh, of the building, they couldn't get the whole thing in by a gravity. There's five bathrooms back here that need to go to a pump station. Again, private pump station. You don't have to worry about it. I think originally it was gonna be a low pressure pump system that the district was gonna end up taking over. And so again, I think it's beneficial to you. Um, as Dave said, uh, they've already paid their fee. Um, we get approval tonight. Ron is probably going to put the pipe in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the water mains in, the storm drains in. They just wait for the sewer. They chop it up there. <laughs> 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 
So they need our food. Camera's on. I know. <laughs> Questions for the on the project? No. Okay. I have several. Um, first, is this a replacement of the facility in Westbrook, or is it? <laughs> no. No. Just an expansion. It's just an expansion. They're they just built a new, brand new building over there, and they're already growing out of it. All right. A lot, of, a lot of people got a lot of pets during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I am a little confused on the flows. Yep. Josh wrote a, an ability to serve letter for the 1910 that was included in this yep. motion. However, Drew's letter had something on the order of 9500. Uh, 1920 versus 9500. This letter that you wrote from March 18, given the district's calculations, would be more like 4,074. Well, what it, what it was is is um, Dave had to comment that based on um, a different different type of use, they had uh, Dave and Josh had the opinion that again, um, I can't remember which which. What use you use as a as a let me know the, yeah. the based on the original the, the proposal and just looking at the use of the facility based on district gallon uh, gallon per square foot standards it would have been that back for that higher number okay. that you're talking right. about but our standards also allow um, uh, developers to to justify their flow based okay. on records from other facilities and that's exactly what he did with right. the su supplemental information and that's what came into the 1920 right i mean it, it okay. calculated out a little bit lower but we aren't going to fight over that so. okay there's a mark i have in the packet read a thing called the industrial wastewater process description under control evaluation of chemistry disposal against federal and state and local requirements Material SDS, which stands for safety data sheets, our review prior to discharge, visual training is present at sinks and drains with the limits, restrictions, and instruction for approval before discharge. I work at a waste treatment plant. If I wrote that and gave that to DP, <laughs> they would laugh at me and find me. Okay. What does that mean? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that, okay. they, that they, it's um, very confusing. And it's extremely confusing. But, but they, they have they have stringent requirements I of, of everything that goes down their sinks. Right. Okay. And, 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 and again, that's what it's saying. Don't just dump stuff. Look at it before you dump it. Oh, okay. they're, 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 that's yeah, they have, they, like there's a little sign. They have, they have very like strict. Uh, yeah, that little and sign, and it says before approval. Who gives the approval? Their EHS. Working in Westbrook, I see those signs all the time. So um, it's just a reminder that there's certain things that they use in their research facility that is not to go down. Right. So exactly. They, that's they, basically they, all that. They tell their people. Uh, uh, uh. It's kind of like the reminder to wash your hands after the bathroom sign. Right. Yeah. Which gets ignored all the yeah. time. Right. <laughs> so Dave was about to say something in your defense, I hope. <laughs> I his defense. I, mean, I, I, uh, I actually reached out to um, Jim, 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 Jim. Crowley. Crowley, thank you. From DEP, yes. From DEP, Industrial Wastewater Treatment Group, Discharge Guru, mm -hmm. from DEP. And had him review what was going on here, and he was very comfortable with okay. this situation. Good to know. This is what I would like to add to requirements. I want SDSs for all these chemicals that are listed. One of them is thiosulfate. I don't know if you know your chemistry, but that means it's got mercury in it. We're not allowed to discharge mercury to the ocean. Oh. So I would like. SDS sheets for all these chemicals and any other chemicals used at the facility sent to Dave for his review, please. Okay. 
um, reading that, excuse me, reading that, it sounded like that was the prohibited chemicals going down, right? No, it's general housekeeping. Detergents for janitorial and kitchen cleaning, boiler chemicals, I want them all. That we should get from every single commercial facility that discharges to us. Because if there is ever a spill or a reason we spike and and we go over the limits for things like mercury, we have to go upstream and find out where they came from. And if we have the SDS sheets on file for IDEX, for uh, Lone Star, for whoever, we can find it. And that's what the sampling manual is for as well. That should be de rigueur, that should happen all the time. And my suspicion is it probably doesn't happen in many towns, although it happens in this town. But I would like to. I'm sure that I'm sure that they have. I'm sure they do, but they sh this sh that should have been included right here. That's my point. That's all. So we don't have that in any regulation, though. Correct? What's that? We don't have that in our current regulations. SDS. If we make one do it. We have to do everybody. And I think we should, but I want it in this particular case because it may not be in Scarborough's, but it's in Wells. And that's what we do. And it's the right thing to do. So that's what I want. I will entertain an amendment to the motion to require that as one of the conditions. That's what Mr. Crowley reviews, by the way. He reviews all the chemical lists and the SDS lists that are coming from commercial users. That's what he does. <clears throat> motion to add uh, an additional condition to require SDS sheets for chemicals being used. I'll second that. I have a little concern. I, I'll do it. I have no, no issues with following up with your, your requirements. I have a little concern about just having paper, paper in a notebook on a shelf. Uh, their processes are going to constantly change. I think we'd be better protected if we required uh, testing at their facility by them on a regular basis. Um, and uh, you know, you know, if just as you talk about, it, if we get a a hit you know, say mercury hit, it's going to come and go. There's no way of tracing it. Um, no, but at least we know they have it in their system. Well, we don't. We don't know where it came from. It could come from anywhere. I realize that. Um, but, it, you know, I, I just don't think that, by, you know, I, I did work with Jim Crowley on this, this, this project, and, and he was very comfortable with what they were doing. Um, and I, th I think the district would be better served at, at, at requiring testing of their wastewater on a regular basis for various concerns right. than, than uh, having the paperwork. I, I, I'm more inclined to be with Dave on this personally. I think also to the point of requiring additional regulations that we're doing not for anybody else currently that we should probably look into as a board. But uh, I think I'd rather understand what their, because um, they do have uh, plans for these types of disposal. I'd rather see what those look like. But I also don't see a reason to hold the project up while they can come back and submit us our answers on what they do for um, disposal of those chemicals, what those plans are. So if we know if we want to go forward with testing, because I'm not comfortable also requiring testing at their cost if it's not needed. Well, we do that all the time with sampling the animals. Yes, and I know, but we're talking about like a regular, regular basis. Something. But if he comes back to us with a big um, a hazardous plan that is not necessary to require sampling, then you know what I'm saying? Before I make a sampling decision, I would rather see what their plans are. But at least like I, I don't see a reason to hold up the project. But not really. I'm with you. And once those go on the, on the shelf, we're not going to probably look at those, and they may change chemicals 
or whatever the case may be. Chemicals or right. processes. SDS sheets are easy to send by email. You stick them in a folder and you can look at them when you have to. And if you want a sampling plan or a hazardous control plan, you can ask for that too. I didn't see any sampling as conditions there, but you know, when you put in front of me this little blinky thing, three paragraph description of your hazardous waste control plan, you know, it doesn't impress me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm inclined. I, you know, I have hesitation in approving having to require SDS sheets if it's not in our regulations. I mean, the fire service, we don't keep SDS sheets on file for every business in town. Uh, That'd be a big minor. Yeah, exactly. So I, I do tend to think that either a testing or a alternate solution there, rather than having to have on file thousands of SDS sheets. Again, it's electronic. You just stick it on the server. You have a file folder already made for IDEX. Put it in there and it's there. Mm -hmm. it's we have to do it. Right? Yeah. We as as the wastewater treatment plant, we have to keep those SDS sheets on the shelf. As, as, as does IDEX. As yeah. does IDEX. But no. DEP doesn't keep them on. No, they just have keep them on. No, but they get copies of the list of chemicals. Right. I still want. I still think they're necessary. And we have an amendment on the board. Yeah. So, we'll call the discussion on the amendment. No, I'm not closing it unless everybody's ready. To oh, yeah. Vote. Is it difficult to get a digital copy of the SDS what, sheets? I wouldn't suspect that it's very difficult. It would take them five minutes. Right. That wouldn't cost them a thing. Okay. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to do with it besides shove it on our server because yeah. I'm not a chemist. No. Um, I'm a chemical engineer. You could send it to me. Well, <laughs> I'd gladly do that. <laughs> um, the, you know, that's why I reached out to Jim Crowley at DEP for that assistance because of you know, my limitations. Um, I'm not familiar with the sheets or how they're used. So. Every business has to have them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have them at the district and, you know. They sit in the binder. They sit in the binder. Right. And Those you got to keep them in perpetuity. You can't throw them away. For as long as you have a camera. So. I don't think you have to keep them forever. If you get rid of a chemical? <coughs> you get rid of the chemical, you better keep them in perpetuity. Because 30 years from now, if you had a bottle of PFAS on the shelf and you spilled it, and they find it in the soil, you need to show them the SDS. Anyway, I digress, I'm sorry. No more snark. <clears throat> uh, first, we'll vote on the amendment that then moved and like seconded. All in favor? The SDS to get out of that uh, condition for approval. Wait a minute. We're voting on the amendment, amendment first and then the original motion. So the amendment that says. As a condition, they have to send the SDS sheets to him for review. That's all. But then that makes them wait another month. No. No, no, that just no. gets added to the condition. Okay. Yeah, it's it's already the condition. Right. Okay. No, this doesn't hold them up at all. They okay. can put the pipe in, in the ground tomorrow once we vote yes on board. Okay. All right. So, again, yeah, last for a vote just on the amendment to add SDS as a condition. All in favor? We have what, four and three against. Okay. The motion passes. Now, for the original motion, unless there's any other discussion, any more points to be made? All in favor for the project? Seven to zero. So, just for clarification for me, thank you. Thank you. 
um, the additional condition is for them to provide me an electronic copy of their SDS sheet. Yes, all SDS of them. For all the chemicals I'm going to use. We'll buy you an extra server. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to store them on Wells. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I guess the district summary. Okay. Um, on behalf of Cross Hold Holden, LLC, Royal Pana, the other one, uh, has requested district project approval for the proposed highest high district subdivision as described in this document. The highest district subdivision is a two lot subdivision for commercial space such as offices, restaurants, and other commercial uses. This area was pre previously approved by the board on October 22nd, 2022 as part of phase five of the Downs. Due to delays, phase five was withdrawn. Consistent with the previous phase of the project, the applicant will be increasing the baseline flow allocation of 160 gallons per lot with additional capacity reserve fee to be paid based on final lot programming during individual site and applications. The sewer network in the Hygis district uh, will collect and convey sewer to the existing 12-inch PVC gravity sewer located on the eastern side of Hygis Parkway. Market Street uh, is intended to be a uh, public road. All sewer infrastructure within the public right-of-way will be transferred over to the district upon the town's acceptance of the road. The proposed sewer consists of 549 feet of the inch diameter gravity sewer, which would be public, and 95 feet of the inch diameter gravity uh, sewer, which would be private. Four manholes uh, on the public side. I recommend flow with the following, uh, recommend approval with the following condition, excuse me. Each lot would be allocated 160 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Uh, water, any flows in excess of this 160 gallon per day allotment or characteristics is uh, in excess is subject to addi additional approvals. Yeah. Uh, this phase is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 18.75 per gallon. It is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record construction cost index. Based on the current rate, the total capacity reserve fee for the two lots is six thousand dollars. Any flows in excess of this approval are subject to additional approvals from the reserve fee. Uh, cost associated with any engineering peer reviews will be paid for the developer. District approval is required for the development of the commercial space and the sewer extension permit and sewer connection permits for each building are required. Complete application of the associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to execution of those permits. And we'll see the work until those permits are executed. Okay. All right. I want to entertain a motion for the project. Motion to approve. Thank you, Joe. Second. Thank you, Joe. We have to move for all the We want to introduce the project or explain a little bit more. Sure. Good evening. Thanks for having me here tonight. Um, I'll start with the whole Downs property here to sort everyone. And a little bit of background on the phase nine withdrawal that we mentioned earlier, just to kind of hopefully not phase, phase, five. Phase, five. Yeah. phase five. Excuse right. me. This is actually phase nine. The word through. serve was different, so you don't know. We don't have a I know. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. So this is the Downs property. I'm sure you're aware of. Main road on your left, Route One on your right, Highest Parkway down here. This is the big IDEX lot that you just approved. Um, the phase five withdrawal is a portion of the Highgate District right here, which is in front of you right now, as well as a portion of, a portion of this town center north district right around my finger right there. It's really kind of the center of the project. Uh, at the time, it was avoiding the track. Um, so that phase five, um, as probably most of you are aware, we're going through some revisions on working with the downtown committee of what that's going to look like since really COVID's happened. So um, given that scope, we've decided working with Dave to withdraw the application because a lot of the gravity mains, a lot of the projected flows are 
basically different at this point. So we originally had an approval for a portion of this to go back to pump station 26, which is active right now. Uh, and at the last time I was here in front of you folks, uh, we got pump station 27 approved. So now that that pump station is now in the ground or becoming get in the ground and under construction, we're gonna utilize that for the next town center. So that's a little bit of background right there. Uh, what's in front of you right now for this item is just the highest district subdivision. Uh, we're calling them lots one and two in the Haggis district. Um, and all we're proposing, and we just got this approved through the town a couple months ago, is about 1,250 feet of what's called Market Street. Uh, so this is really the gateway to the town center project. So what we've decided to do is essentially this application is just a smaller version of the previous one. Uh, it's actually the same alignment, the same gravity main, really no difference. Uh, we've just scaled it down and we're gonna come back in later when we know exactly what's going on here in the town center. Um, so it's just a two lot commercial subdivision. We don't have any, well, I, mean, I say we, I keep saying that. <laughs> Crossroads doesn't have any end users right now at the time for lots one and two. Uh, so we've just done the minimum, which is 160 gallons per day. And uh, we're gonna obviously come back for a site plan approval with plans and everything showing connections uh, to those means. Uh, so this, as we got it previously designed, this um, development with this tributary to pump station 23, which is just north of the beacon, right down by my finger down here. Um, and I've just provided some basic, you know, anticipated capacity calculations just to size the main and show that there's essentially no capacity concerns in that uh, for that infrastructure. Um, that's really it, if I didn't confuse you too bad. We're really just looking for this area right here. Oh, I will mention, um, the reason for us doing this, it may seem a little weird why we're just building 1,200 feet of road for essentially no reason, is it's really driven by putting in a large culvert for the Willowdale crossing. We're governed by our DEP permit to put that in a low flow period. It's really important for the team for it to go in this summer. So that kind of working back from there, we need to get the road in, we want to get all the infrastructure in. Uh, and it really is going to start activating that town center um, that we're hoping to be working on there relatively shortly. So that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions for you? I'm curious, the, is there going to be an entrance from Texas Parkway to come onto that part of the road? Correct, yeah, so there's going to be a new intersection right here. That's Haggis Parkway. Right? This is Haggis Parkway. Right. I mean, yeah. is there, is, right now it's not open. Correct. Right, the sewer's gone in, um, the manholes are in the back of it, right? Or am I looking at it in part of the Haggis Parkway? We, that's what was perfect. recently installed was for the force main for pump station 27 a little further down. Right. This project hasn't been installed yet. They've actually cleared it, so if you go out there, it's like yeah, the road has been built. Yeah. The road hasn't been built. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it might be. Yeah. And I don't know. To my we have, we have manholes up and down that shoulder. Okay. And they installed the new manhole for the force main further on up the line. Uh, that's what I mean. A little bit south of it. There's yeah, so there's kind of two entrances. This one's obviously going to pump station five, I believe. Right. That that's basically the old tote road is, is where right. the, the force main is. And that force main location was picked because that's the the high the high point of Haggis Parkway and it flows going with gravity. Back one. It goes for closer in gravity at that yeah. point. Okay. Now I got it. Thanks for setting this straight. Not us. Just you. Just me. We're all Thanks for setting me straight. <laughs> She's asking. <laughs> anyway, so any more questions? Go ahead, Mike. So does um what what once this is it's all built out. So it sounds like um some of the flow will go gravity to the Route 1, and the rest will end up at the pump station by the Beacon, by the, by the Beacon Apartments? Yeah, this will flow to the, the pump station by the Beacon Apartments. Okay. And some additional, uh, this is actually a very short piece of uh, sewer. I think this is, this is all the gravity that will go out the, out to the, the Beacon, uh, the, the, the pump station okay. by the Beacon. Yeah, that's, that's the, sorry, that's Every, the plan. Yeah, everything else is going down the road. Two one. Basically, the barrier of Willowdale Brook right here kind of forced us to go that direction rather than pumping back to another pump that we'd have to. So that was the. Okay. Cool. 
Any more questions for Julie? All in favor? None opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, uh, we have one more item on the agenda, and then I'm going to ask for a suspension of the rules to add two more items after that. Okay. Okay. So you want to talk about the budget? Somebody? Yeah, that's okay. Just keep it in order. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, so the three month budget summary is in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a question, and without letting the cat out of the bag for future points, does this need to be revised if we approve the future items that we're about to put on the agenda? No, next month. It depends. Okay. How's that answer? How's that for an answer? All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Joe is suggesting that if we had to revise it, we would do that next month. Yeah, because we're going to vote on the way that is right now. That works for me. Any other questions for the superintendent? All in favor? None of them. Thank you. I didn't catch it. I moved. Second. I moved. Second. I moved. Second. That was the previous one. <laughs> So we have a request from the superintendent to suspend the rules and add new items on the agenda. Under new business, they would be item F for Guam Road Force Main and item G for pump station number two. What will upgrade? Move to suspend the rules to add new business items F and G. Thank you, Paul. Second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? Uh, oh, All right, Gorham Road Force Main. Uh, the town received bids for the proposed work on the Gorham Road, which includes the replacement of the Force Main from Maple Ave to um, the, the river. Uh, the project came in over budget, uh, the, and um, both the town and the district have been working with, uh, I think it's, I can't remember a little bit, or it's Shell Brothers, or anyway. Um, Ron. Ron, thank you. Um, and we did, we were able to uh, trim about $85,000 off of uh, the district's cost. Uh, with that, the final cost uh, for the district is coming in at uh, $1,259,550 or the equivalent of $370 per foot. Uh, which is 359550 over budget of our 900000 which we have budgeted. As you may recall, this is the second bid we received for this work. The first was in part with the gas company. That time the bids came in at $450 per foot. I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute the contract for the uh, one million two hundred fifty-nine thousand five hundred fifty, and allocated an additional five percent for construction contingencies. I'll entertain a motion for that. Approval. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent? Assuming it's construction costs from the first project to the second. It's well, yeah. It's welcome to the new world. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they can. Because huh? they can. And I, I just, to put it on record, I think we all know that we have uh, suspect pipe in the area. Uh, yeah. This is the right. time to do it. It, um, it. it will never be any cheaper for the district uh, with regards to. Um, some of the uh, uh, project mobilization, traffic control, which is horrendous on this road, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and road reconstruction, we're, we're only absorbing 25% of that. The town is, is carrying the, the burden of that um, because it, you know, we're doing a lot more work on that. So. Yeah, I, sorry. 
No, I think it's an opportunity like when, when we do entertain the gas company, uh, it's going to be cheaper for us to do it now while they're doing infrastructure upgrades. That makes sense. It is what it is as far as the cost goes. And did we already replace a part of this portion on the lower end yet or not? Oh, we've replaced many parts of this. No, no, I <laughs> as part of a project. Didn't, we didn't replace any of it yet. We actually did. Uh, no, not on the lower end. We replaced on the upper, upper end. end. Right. Um, right. uh, you, by, you know, when they did the, the upper part, they did a uh, some covert this work, which right. we had to go right. down, and and down and underneath the, yeah. uh, the culvert. I remember that. Okay. But that wasn't a long piece. Most of it. No, was that was probably two hundred feet. And the one million three hundred thousand, I think it was, or one million two thousand that they have for a replacement of the pipe in their bid item. Does that mean installed install. using the pipe that we already pre-purchased? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good to repurchase. Repurchase that pipe. Yeah, that was a wise move. I think uh, I, I actually just heard today that Dr. Lion pipe is like eight months out. Is what? Eight, eight months out. Yeah. Until the very time if you place the order today. <coughs> Any more questions? Uh, I had a question. Just uh, you know, I completely agree. Now's the time, partners got to do it. I just wanted to understand the budget right. side of things. Yeah. How, what, how would we need to do? We'll have to, next, I'll do that this next month, we'll amend the budget to increase that line item. We had $900,000 on it. We have it in the uh, fixed asset account to cover that increase in cost. I think the line item today was referred to as under capital. Capital improvement. That, that, that lumps, yeah. that lumps yeah. them all. Yeah. Yeah. It's lumped into that piece. So that's the bottom line right before total expenses. Cool. All in favor? Not opposed. Did you, we, we had eight votes. <laughs> we did. We <laughs> did. All right. Item G, pump station two wet well upgrades. Underwood has completed the uh, preliminary design for the upgrades to the pump station two wet well. Originally, this was to be completed in calendar year 2021, but uh, due to COVID, it got delayed. The original budget was 290,000, but as noted in the most recent update, construction cost estimates are now at 350. I have a few questions for the board regarding this project. Um, do, do we want to? As, as originally envisioned, we were going to fund this project fully out of fixed assets, and we still can do that. Um, we could could move forward with a bond, a loan directly from the bond bank or SRF. And some of these questions are really uh, at, uh, being asked because it impacts how we set up the the, the bid forms or the, the specifications, the front of the specifications, as Mike and Nick and Paul. Quite well. uh, and then finally, when do we want the construction to take place? Uh, it, we're in a position that we could do it this fall, which again, we would have to amend the project, or we could um, plan for it in the spring and do it this uh, spring before the onset of the, the summer uh, and, and budget for it at that time. So, Oh, we're talking a sixty thousand dollars. Sorry, you know, you're talking a sixty thousand dollars difference in what we had budgeted. Yes, but we had budgeted it in twenty twenty one. Okay, and I think they so kind of carried forward. I, I don't know why I didn't carry it forward, but I didn't. I, didn't. I see. I'm sorry. It's so hard. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so that was the original budget for twenty twenty one. Is when we first envisioned this to be done. So um, we could. I think we could very easily. I just said that. What's that? I tried to whisper it to him, but he didn't hear me. <laughs> <coughs> so it uh, sounds like, though, you've got a whole lot of new expenses or increased expenses already this year. Yes. And so does this have to be something that you feel as the director needs to be done this year? I think it very easily could be done next spring. 
Okay. I think it very easily. Because anything that, that we talked about in here that had to do money included the word increase. Increase. Yes. Yeah. yes. And I think that's going to make. It's gonna I really am very for bottom line. Very concerned about budget for next, you know, um, Every for next year. Right. You know, I, I think we'll be okay this year, frankly. I think we'll, you know, um, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll squeak by this year, and uh, but next year it's going to be a dramatic increase. Right. I don't think there's any way around it. Um, can we get a million dollars for that land? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking look. 10 million, pretty good, right? Probably it's not. <laughs> right. Um, sorry, so infrastructure wise, I mean, I'm also kind of concerned with construction costs, right? Mm -hmm. So it isn't going to get any cheaper, right? Um, but uh, infrastructure wise, you're not concerned about pushing it out because my only concern is, is when we start hauling sludge in, in 90 days, how many more times we have to haul and what that impact is going to be because it's going to double our costs. So I, I also don't want to see us go over um, so much so that it affects us in other ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and I think that's all very, very good foresight. Let, let's see how things unfold the rest of the year and then push this off to the spring. You know, I, don't, I don't see that as being a mission, and that's why I don't want to identify it as, a, as an option. Do, do we have, you might not be able to answer this, do we have any idea if we do push this out, if, how that might change that number to the spring? I didn't know if Under would kind of, I didn't know if Under would kind of said, if you push this out, you know, you can look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this. Because right now it's $60,000. Give me $600,000. Over saw ball. a bid where no one showed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, there's no excavation involved with this. There's small amount for a uh, one manhole uh, to install over the existing gravity sewer line that's coming yeah. into the wet well, okay. and then the bypass pumping will be set up through that. Didn't I see sheet piling involved there too? And we probably showed it around the manhole. That the soils there are awful, oh, yeah. which is oh. the reason why I went down the route of. Uh, rehabbing the existing wet well versus just replacing it, it, it because that 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 wet well and pump station are on pilings. Okay, so <laughs> so probably yeah. someone like like Knowles would would, would do this for it, right? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Is instead of waiting, and maybe this is what we're talking about. Bid it if if we agree. Bid it now for work next year. Meaning we know we can get a, a firm price for them to do the work. You just give them more schedule flexibility, and that might give them a, a good incentive to give a decent price. I like that. Just like read that bottom line. line that it's spring of twenty twenty three. Right, <laughs> and that you know they're not going to adjust the price two weeks before the project is. I know that's what builders do. Right. I'll call you two weeks before and let you know that your house is now forty-five thousand dollars more than you signed a year ago. Because the wood went up two weeks before. Yeah. So, so you're saying they're going to submit two bid prices? One is that they do it in the in the summer no, now. They would do one bid price with bid? the proviso that the start date is April first next year. So bid it this uh, fall for construction. You choose contract that December or January from January to May. <laughs> Get it done. Somewhere in there. I mean, I suggest that for a number of reasons. Materials, we've talked about that already. I mean, we we might put it out to bid thinking that they're going to respond and build it in three months. Well, they might be thinking they're going to respond and build it in eight months. <laughs> right, exactly. We could know that up front um, with little risk. The risk is. You get a firm price now, and you're asking them to hold their price, and then they come back to you and say, "Hey, right. here are all the reasons why my costs have escalated." Which what we're, which we could manage with an escalation factor, but 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Yeah, that. I mean, this is only a this That's is only a preliminary design cost. We really kind of need to see what that looks like. And if it's taking eight months for ductile pipe, we need to order some things. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Absolutely. Um, so, so I'm hearing okay. spring bid. It is spring bill, but fall bid. Twenty three budget. Twenty three yeah. budget. Yeah. Um, <coughs> as for borrowing, that's not enough. I don't know if we need to do it for such a small project. This one. But I wouldn't be averse to going to a local bank and getting a decent loan. Well, you can go directly to the bond back. Or you can back to. The you don't have to. You, you don't have to go through SRF, which for this project here, SRF is, is I don't think is it's overkill. It's overkill. I'd rather pull it up fixed assets. You would be a premium for yeah. SRF versus bond man. I mean, we, we do have the money in our fixed assets. I think. Is that how we're paying for force money? Yes. And we would still have enough. Mm -hmm. That would be still under control when we get to the dollars. Considering interest rates, I'd rather do that. If we had that to. is, unless the engineers ask me to do some fair estimate, it's going to have a nice year. That'll be a next budget. In 2023, we retire our last one day. We're red associates, so we'd love it if we get a new one after the other one expires. <laughs> Do we get the burn the more? <laughs> so you need, we don't need any action on the stack. No. But I, I, I've got the desire of the board. That's all I need. Okay. So no motion. Board. Yes. You're right. Everything is. You know, Carl came into my office today. He says, this is this is going well. This is. I got another increase. It's like. That's what I'm here to tell you about. I got one too. <laughs> with that, with that, I uh, will entertain any public comments. Bridget, do you have any comments? Do you have anything to say? We voted. You no. have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trustee comments. We'll start with that. Uh, really happy with the way things are going and uh, another good month for the district. Thanks to all the staff and everyone. Uh, is, is it appropriate for me to jump back very briefly to an agenda item? No. Is that, is that okay? It's not inappropriate. It is, a, it is appropriate. Okay, all right. You know, I just, my mind's been racing a little bit about Herb Gray just imagining like 20 condos going up and then getting all sorts of complaints about all right. about district op operations uh i mean i would in in retrospect i wish i just asked him more pointedly you know what does that four acres get you and what are you planning he's obviously planning something that that four acre threshold has i could go you know look in the town ordinance and see what that four acre threshold gets um i could call mr gray directly and talk to him a little more about it but i you know, there's not, we don't have any dwellings, you know, within whatever, seven, 700 feet of the district right now. And if all, all of a sudden we're going to get, you know, 10 dwelling units a lot, a lot closer. Mm -hmm. We could be priming ourselves for endless complaints. We would answer those complaints with? We would have. Well, with the new, with the new law that just said, uh, we no should have that. passed. Can anybody build a four family home on that property? Um, what did you just say? The new uh, yeah, LD the 2003. Oh. And I'm not concerned about yeah. that, uh, but it, I mean, this could bring a, a much greater magnitude. And, and, I, and you know, I've seen this stuff happen. People will buy a house knowing they're buying a house right next to something they don't like and then complain about it on a monthly basis. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't make intuitive sense, but I see it happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, lots, lots of risks that we're taking. Potentially, I mean, he could up and sell all of his property <laughs> after we well, sell it to it's him. It's not Mr. Gray that we're going to worry about. It's his children and grandchildren. Yeah, yeah exactly. and, and he's probably, you know, trying to get the best value for his estate, and which is which is a great thing to do, and I support that. You know, to to an extent, 
but I, I do think we need to be careful of how much development could go significantly closer to. We should definitely find out what the four, four acre threshold yeah. gives. It. And I don't mind talking to Mr. Gray directly about that, and uh, and talking, you know, to the town code department, and just a asking what those four acre triggers jump to. And I think Dave's all over it. I mean, if we're talking, we're talking about. Three, three or four houses. I'm not terribly concerned about it, but you know, 20 condos could could be a nightmare for us. I know what he had spoke to me about was he wants to build one house back there for I can't remember whether it was Sarah's daughter. Yeah, uh, it was one of his children. So. And if and if that's what we're talking about, if he's trying to build one or two additional houses for his children, I'm 100% support that. Poor. My, my mind is just yes. racing pessimistically. <laughs> just wanted to bring that up. It's the curse of the job. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Jason. No comments from you this week or this month. <laughs> Ruth? I got two phone calls this past month because I sit on this board. And my first thought was, oh my gosh, Dave must be pulling his hair out. So thank you, because I can only imagine that your month was a little crazier than my two phone calls. So thank you to you and your staff, because it's not easy, and you do a great job. You make it look easy. So thank you. Hello. Mike, excuse me. I did see you in Channel 6 that day for about, what, five seconds? Yeah. <laughs> but you look good. <laughs> he was still standing. That was all that mattered. Yeah, yeah. No, um, think you know. Thank you, everyone, for the hard work. I, I want to say this is probably what like sixth or seventh meeting. This is probably one of the more exciting meetings. Whatever. I'm not sure what that excitement <laughs> scale is. But uh, I heard you out low. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, but, exciting as it gets. Yeah. Unless you unless you compare it to the one Mr. Richie showed up. But uh, on that, yeah, thank you for the hard work. Cool. Paul. Oh. I uh, definitely wanted to echo those sentiments of, um, of thank you, uh, Dave and staff. Obviously, a very busy month. And, you know, with the legislation that, that, that's, that's going on, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, it's these issues are complicated, and I feel like I just want to express that, you know, advocacy one way or the other can always be misinterpreted. Protect, protecting public health and protecting the environment is what we do, and we do well. So, so. Joe, um, yes, no, I'm, I agree. You know, a lot of busy work this uh, this past month and more to come by the sounds of it. But uh, I did want to thank Dave for going to Augusta to advocate a, um, a, a position on this. Um, I also got many phone calls about the items. And it's always good, and my first phone call back was to Dave to try to figure out what exactly was going on. So there's always a, two sides to everything, I think. Um, but I appreciate you explaining that and also explaining it to the constituents up in, uh, in Augusta, uh, the state of Augusta. So thank you for that, and, uh, and, and we do do our part to make sure that we are doing the right thing for our the people that uh, elect us here, and uh, and also our staff as far as health and safety goes. Um, so thank you for that, and thanks to the staff. It's always for to your hard work. Both Ann Carney and um, Sharon Channon Channon on the albums. Huh? No, 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 that's not right. Yes, I know it. No, yeah, wrong one. Brennan. Brennan, thank you. I knew it's our Stacy Brennan. Stacy Brennan. Stacy Brennan. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. I uh, have, uh, you know, in conversations, you know, you know invited them out uh, numerous times to come out and take a look at what we do. Uh, they both have stated that they would would come on out, and uh, I'd, I'd love to show them the facility and everything. I hope they, they follow through on that. And I'll let you know if that happens. Well, um, I also too want to thank Dave for doing the press conference about Augusta and putting forth our um, our reason to be to protect the human health and the environment. We are the original.
Cultural and Environmentalists. And you're right, Paul, this class issue is a complicated one. There is no magic wand or silver bullet for this. Um, I also want to thank Carl and Paul for putting the Vapex unit in at uh, Headworks. Looking forward to seeing it up and running. Um, and I guess I'll just entertain a common motion. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. All in favor? We're done.